Fiona, are you still there? We're about to dig into the most delicious Oceanside barbecue you can imagine. Fresh seafood, right off the boat. Wish you were here to enjoy it with us. You don't have to rub it in, Dad. I get it. You're having a great vacation. What's with the attitude, Fiona? I just wanted to check in on you. I'm not interested in your vacation, Dad. And I don't care what you're eating. You haven't changed a bit since we left, Fiona. I thought reaching out might lighten the mood. I'm not happy about any of this, Dad. Not even a little bit. When did you start thinking it was okay to disrespect your parents like this, Fiona? We raised you better than this. I never saw you two as my parents. So I think a little disrespect is warranted. What? You've been insulting not just me, but your mother as well. You owe us for the life we've given. The only people who've helped me lead a decent life are not you two. Everyone else has done a better job raising me. You're really pushing my buttons, Fiona. Your attitude is all we ever see from you anymore. We never wanted you to turn out like this. My attitude isn't the problem here, Dad. The problem is that you two never cared about what I had to say or what I needed from you. You always favored Hebe and left me to fend for myself. That's why I am the way I am. Your insolence is reaching its peak. It's your obstinate demeanor that's the thorn in our sides. You're nothing like Hebe. You two are as different as night and day. She's the epitome of grace and you're, well, you're not. She's always been considerate of us, unlike you. She's intelligent and humble, understanding the sacrifices we make for her. If only you had a fraction of her virtues. So, I was never good enough for you, was I? You always held her on a pedestal, constantly comparing me to her. It was suffocating. I distanced myself from you all to preserve my sanity. You just didn't put in the effort when it mattered. You're probably just envious of her, which made you resent our comments. Now, you're the outcast of our family, always complaining about everything. Do you think we enjoy supporting such a person? We have Hebe, who is kind and intelligent. We've decided to prioritize her over you. Fine, I get it. I guess that's why I am the way I am. Enjoy your vacation on my behalf. And please, spare me the daily texts gloating about your trip. I've had enough. You always have a sharp tongue. Don't you understand? We wanted you to join us on this trip. Do you know why you're not here with us? Because I feel sick? Just before our meticulously planned trip, you conveniently fell ill. Hebe, being the caring soul she is, suggested we cancel the trip. But why should we sacrifice our happiness for someone who falls ill at such an inconvenient time? Now Hebe is worried about you when she should be relaxing with us. Do you feel any remorse for causing her stress? It's not like I plan to fall sick before our trip. Enough with your excuses. Your incessant chatter is giving me a headache. You still behave like a child because you don't understand what it means to grow up. Right. This is what happens when you disregard your parents. While we're enjoying our vacation, wallow in self-pity and think about the fun we're having at this beautiful resort. And don't forget to clean the house before we return. Three days later. Are you ever going to come out from hiding in your room? You should come out and live your life like the rest of us do. We finally got back from our trip and want to see you. Is that all you wanted to say? Huh? 
There isn't anything else I need to say to you. I was just thinking I should probably ask if you'd come out to see how you'd react. Really, I'm fine with you not coming out of that hole of yours yet. Either way, I'm sure I'll know when you eventually decide to come out, since you'll probably be making a huge fuss of us leaving you here. I see. But Hebe, she's been worried sick about you. She calls at least five times a day. So even if it doesn't entirely bother me, at least come out for your sister. Why should I? I've stopped caring about what any of you think. Hold on there. Don't say such harsh things. Can't you at least pretend to be a caring older sister while we're around? Hebe even expressed her concern for your health after your fever. And what makes her think I want to see her? Does she believe this will mend our strained relationship? Or perhaps she wants me around so I can continue funding your lifestyles? What? Money? Hebe never borrowed money from you. Are you imagining things now? Not her, but you and mom took the money I earned from selling designer bags at my part-time job. That was about $15,000 worth of bags that I sold. So, I'd like my reimbursement for the money you spent. What the heck? If you plan to do that, then go right ahead. I'll just make sure to kick you out of the house for doing that. Really? Then perhaps we should take this matter to court. I'm sure they would side with me since I never gave you permission to use that money. Wait. Initially, I didn't want to resort to this. But considering how you left me behind while going on vacation with my money, I don't feel too guilty about it. Well, hold on a minute. I thought we agreed that the money I got for those bags would be given to me. And then I would give you guys like a grand or two. But instead you guys went ahead and spent it all going on that stupid vacation after I did all the work. I guess I should have known this would happen since you guys kept pushing for me to work harder and harder to get all the money I could. You guys didn't even care that I came down with a fever, instead just leaving me at home to try and care for myself. But, wait. And now, because of your negligence, my fever turned into pneumonia, and here I am in the hospital trying to recover. Are you satisfied now? What? You're in the hospital. Uncle Dylan and Aunt Milka drove me here when they found out you left me alone. They were appalled by your actions and called you a disgraceful family. How does that make you feel? My brother said that. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Once I'm discharged from the hospital, I'll be moving in with Uncle Dylan and Aunt Milka. And the best part? I won't have to share my earnings from my part-time job with any of you. Wait! You are getting too far ahead of yourself. I couldn't care less about what you think about my choice. I'm not even thankful for you guys letting me stay at your house for the past 20 years. I had to go right to work after graduating high school, and even then I needed to give you guys whatever money I made to help support you guys. You supported us. You're an idiot. So there's no way you could have supported us. Are you having trouble understanding things in that tiny brain of yours? But you guys were already starting to move my things around like you were ready for me to get out, right? So you should be in total agreement with me leaving the house. Ah, but here's the thing. Now there won't be any money coming into the house that you guys can steal after I leave. Well, I guess that life is going to get a little bit thought now that your wallet will be just a bit more empty, huh? But for me, I will finally become free of you guys, and I won't have to give you any more of my money. Do you plan to fight back at us in return for our kindness to you? 
Ha! Huh. There was never any kindness from you guys. The only thing that I ever received was pain from having to be around you all for so long. What? Did you guys at least have fun on that vacation that I helped pay for? From now on the three of you won't be able to go on any exciting trips like that anymore, right? If I have to say it a little more straightforward, you reap what you sow. Well, once I have fully recovered, I will be moving in with Uncle Dylan. So please enjoy only needing to raise your amazing baby girl, Hebe. Wait! Fiona! I will definitely not be forgiving you for this. You're just going to leave us all behind to go live with my brother. Four years later... Hey! Why won't you return to us? Ha! Huh? Who is this? Are you still half asleep or something? It's your father. You blocked my number without telling me. So, I changed my number to reach you again. You've wasted so much of my time by running away from your family. But you were never my family. How dare you? You abandoned us all. How long do you plan to sulk and hide? It's been four years. It's time for you to face reality and come back home. Ah, so this must be my former father. Your ranting reminds me of your terrible attitude. What? I'm not the one with an attitude. And stop pretending I'm not your father anymore. When are you coming back home? Return already. Why should I return to a place where I was treated like property? And after four years of silence, you could at least introduce yourself properly instead of hurling insults. If I recall correctly, I was treated like a servant before I decided enough was enough. Your constant attempts to paint me as the villain are infuriating. A lot has changed in our family over the past four years. We could really use your help if you'd stop being so stubborn and come home. Ha ha ha. What's so funny? Hey, Fiona. Answer me. A few moments later. Answer me. I've been ringing your doorbell incessantly. Are you deaf? Open the door and face me. Ah, so you finally decided to confront me directly. Uncle Dylan must have softened and given you my address, didn't he? I'm sure you tricked him into it. What do you mean tricked him? I simply asked if he knew where you were staying. To accuse me of deceiving my own brother is absurd. Really? You must have deceived him. I bet you spun a tale of regret and remorse to gain his sympathy. You'd make a great actor with your feigned contrition. What? I won't stand for such accusations. Open the door! Uncle Dylan told me you should be home from work by now. I won't stop ringing this doorbell until you answer. How rude of you! I'll make sure your husband hears about all the terrible things you did to your family. I wonder if that will make him leave you. That would serve you right. So, you found out about my marriage? Yes, that's right. You didn't even bother to inform us about your marriage registration. But then again, I would have never approved it anyway. I'll do everything in my power to break you two apart. You seem desperate to get back at me. Is your family in some kind of trouble? That's the only reason I can think of why you'd be so upset after five years. You're just trying to get close to me again because you can't handle things at home on your own. How pathetic. Shut up. All our problems, past and present, are because of your actions. So, nothing's changed? You still blame me for everything. 
It's high time you started caring for your family again and repaying us. So, your family is broke because of your reckless spending? I just want some extra money for emergencies. And Hebe is getting married next year. You're going to pay for all her wedding expenses like the venue and her dress. Is that so? What's that supposed to mean? If you can act so nonchalant now, then you can open this door and talk to me face to face. And if your husband is home, tell him to come out too. Well, about that. It's time for you to calm down. My husband is home right now, but I'm not. What? My husband texted me a few minutes ago saying there was someone outside our front door shouting obscenities. He asked if I knew who it was. Good thing you texted me, or he might have called the police on you. Well then, if he's in the house right now, tell him to come out here and face me. I've been pounding on this door for minutes now. How dare you ignore me? When you are not around, does he not have the balls to face a threat? Well, I guess that it makes sense since he was stupid enough to marry someone as arrogant as you. Tell him to open the front door right now. Tell him that I am here to teach him a good old-fashioned lesson. Well, you might think he is a coward for not coming to face you. But I think he can get pretty crazy when I am not around. So I am really glad you told me it was you, before something really, really bad could have happened. What are you rambling on about? Since you aren't here to listen to me, tell him to open this door now. Ah, it looks like that is what he is about to do. He told me that if he doesn't open the door soon, the young Rajaholic in him will get the best of you. Of course, if that were to happen, I don't think things would end very well for you. Huh? What does that mean? Well, once you see him, I'm sure you will begin to understand. Anyway, I need to finish grocery shopping, and then I will come back home. A few minutes later... Are you there? I hope you are still alive. I just had the worst day of my life a second ago. Your husband is one of those heavy body types, huh? The kind that is too big and angry to control. I think he finally found out what I meant when I said that he was going to be scary when I'm not around. He told me that you wanted to talk with him for a little while when he answered the door. So while I was thinking about how long it would take you to finish wasting his time, I went out with his mom to get some dinner. What? Did you think that I would come home to try and stop him? I don't have any reason to be going out of my way to do that. Having to drive all the way home would have been a bother for me, and having to see your face would have only been worse. But you said that after shopping you would come home. Help me. But now that I think about it, did you end up pissing your pants? My husband said he was busting out laughing at you. He said that your face got as red as a lobster. And that there was a dark spot that started to form on your pants. This is the best I have felt in a super long time. Stop. Please help me. And don't tell this to anyone else. But you have already made it so that I won't help you. And I'm sorry, but I think you are a little too late asking me. What? My mother-in-law already told your wife and Hebe about this. I had her tell your wife to send us some money to get the area around the front room replaced. Since you decided to piss all over it. You didn't even clean it up before you ran home. What? You came to my house trying to get money from me, only to leave creating more embarrassment for yourself. Ah. And you created unnecessary expenses as well. You are going to get it for talking to me this way. 
Well, I think this is really going to be goodbye for us. Now that you have learned from this great experience, there shouldn't be any worries about you visiting my house a second time, right? Ah, but you probably couldn't come even if you tried. See ya, old man. Oh, wait. See ya, Mr. Pants Wetter. Many months later. What is up with this? Coming to my house with your husband. Calm down, Mr. Pants Wetter. Good afternoon. We aren't here for anything really important, actually. Really? We just came to get the money we requested for our new flooring after you made a mess on it. Um, what? And we thought by coming here directly, we would be able to get that money in one lump sum payment. Well, we could just get a loan for the new flooring, so paying it bit by bit would also work, but... If you guys did that, we would need to continue coming here, and we both know that that isn't what anyone wants. But if that is really what you guys want to do, then that works. Oh. In total, it will be about $10,000. So if you can make this transaction quick, that would be great. Do you think that we have $10,000 just laying around here? Please just forgive me for what happened. Ha! Huh? Even after coming into our house and making a nasty mess on our beautiful hardwood flooring, you aren't going to give us any money to replace it? You think that we will just forgive you in exchange for nothing? But... Is it because you don't have any money? Well, then ask some of your relatives to get some money together for you. At this point in time, I don't need to stand here telling you what to do. You should know that when you don't have the money, you need to get it from someone else. Erg. Ah, but that's right. You have a super smart and amazing daughter who's moved out of the house now, right? But when we went to visit her place before coming here, it didn't look like she was at home. Hey, you stop bringing Hebe into this. She's your little sister. You have no right thinking that she will be the one to pay you. And I doubt she would help someone as wretched as you in getting that money back from us anyways. As wretched as me? What's up with that remark? Ah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could you please find some way to forgive us? Be careful. If you decide not to pay us back for the flooring, this might just turn into a settlement that needs to be dealt with in court. So this will be my last warning to you. I'll give you one week to get that money for me. Okay. One week later. Fiona. Hey. Didn't I tell you not to get Hebe involved in all of this? She told me that your husband showed up to the building that she works in. Well, he did go there. Stop doing this to her. I will pay you back, so please forgive us now. Is it all going to be paid in one payment? Yes. All right. Then I'm going to send my husband over there in a bit to collect what we asked for. But just remember, if you try to pull anything on us, you'll be met with the same situation as last time. You do know what I mean, right? This is all because of you trying to get some money from me. But instead find yourself pissing your pants and making a mess on my floor, right? We just need this money so that we can get the floor replaced and move on with our lives. So just remember that this money is paying to fix that incident. All right. Great. Well, he will be over around 8 p.m. tonight to grab that money from you. And that money better be all of the $10,000 we had asked for. The following day. Right now I am on a lunch break. I hope work has been going well for you today. Have you been making good progress? 
Of course I have been. Both mom and dad have stopped coming to the office building, so everything is just perfect. Thank you so much for helping me. My co-workers are also really thankful for what you did. Then I guess they must have really caused quite the ruckus then. They were actually acting like the lowest of the low. Every day mom would come here saying that it was my boss's fault that I was always returning home worn out and beaten because of the overtime. Every damn day that she came in complaining only made me more embarrassed. Dang. And dad kept holding up all the lines at work because he would constantly call trying to get a hold of someone to complain to. If anyone did answer he would keep asking them when I would be given a raise. All I could think of is how much longer they could push on with this stupid crap. I've heard all the things about what happened, but all I can say is that it must have been a flat-out mess with those two. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there with you all the time. Don't worry about it. If anything I should be the one saying sorry. You would always say for me to not worry about you but... But just by looking at how you were treated made me feel miserable. It made me think that we should have tried harder to fight back against what mom and dad were doing to us. Well, just by saying that, you have made me feel a million times better. Well, I am just glad that the both of us were able to make it out alive and we were able to fully cut ties with the two of those clowns. It seems that your husband told mom that he will be keeping a close eye on her if she ever tries to come back. So all throughout the day it was finally quiet in the office building. So it looks like everything went really well for you then. Absolutely. But I am sorry that I had to get the help of your husband to keep mom away. It's not a problem at all. When Jesse first heard about what mom and dad put me through, he was super pissed and wanted to do everything he could to stop them from being so abusive. Well, when he first approached dad, things got more out of hand than I first thought could happen. At least for dad anyway. Ah. When he peed himself, right? That was so hilarious that everyone in our family found out. So thank you for letting us know about that one. When I said that I didn't have anything to do with them anymore, I said that having a dad that wets himself when trying to get money from his daughter is worse than not having any parents at all. Then I bet that that will be the one story that our family will never let go of about him. Yesterday, I had Jesse go over to their place to finally get the money that they owed us for ruining our floors. That is great. Well, thanks to your husband, I shouldn't have to worry about mom causing any more trouble at work either. And once I have my wedding, we will move to a new address and totally be hidden from those two. Then I can finally be free to do what I want. That's amazing! Hebe! Congratulations on getting married! Please have a wonderful life with your husband, okay? Thank you. And by the way, please make sure that you come to my wedding. After Hebe cut ties with the troublesome individuals who kept trying to contact her, they continued their attempts to get her help to repay them for their supposed kindness during her stay with them. However, when Jesse responded to their demands over the phone, they panicked and hung up. Since then, they haven't made any further attempts to reach out. The narrator is uncertain about their current whereabouts, but isn't concerned. Several months later, the narrator attended Hebe's wedding, where they were surprised to see Jesse, who was typically big and tough, shedding tears like a father figure. This emotional moment resonated with both the narrator and Jesse, as they had all experienced their own hardships. Witnessing Hebe's happiness on her wedding day, free from worrying about her parents, brought smiles to both their faces.